come after me and I will make you fishers of men. With our reading last week, and our reading this week, we have two strong Gospels about calling. God calling us to communion with Him. When I was in Yosha last week, that's what I preached on, was through our baptisms, we are called into communion with God and called to be priests of the baptized faithful. That is most of what I focused on last week and how God has called us to be one with Him. And how does that occur? Here at Mass, here with the liturgy, that divine liturgy that comes to us from Calvary, from heaven, breaking forth into this world. That is how we are called into communion and brought into communion with God. And this sacrifice isn't just a one-off that came out of absolutely nowhere. No. This sacrifice fulfills all of the Old Testament prophecies and all of the Old Testament sacrifices. If you think about it, look back over the course of the years of the centuries of the Old Testament and you will see the fulfillment of said sacrifices in the sacrifice, the holy sacrifice of the Mass. And that is how we are brought into communion with God. No other religion does this. In no other religion are we brought into communion with God that we actually have a God that loves us so much that he wants to be united with us. Yeah, there's religions that have love and compassion and treating people with care, but when it's all said and done, if there's a deity and there is an afterlife, our personalities are annihilated as we are reforged and reunited into the deity. That's not how it works with us. As Christians, but especially as Catholics, we are called in our individual personalities into communion with God now. And if we live our lives according to the way that Jesus teaches, and God taught in the Old Testament, the morality anyway, then we will be united with God in heaven, experiencing nothing but joy peace and love. There will be no pain. There will be no sorrow. There will be no tiredness. There will only be joy, peace, and love. That is the great blessing that we have. And a holy sacrifice of the Mass prepares us for that now. You might say, Father, how does this Mass fulfill all these Old Testament sacrifices. All we have to do is look back into the Old Testament and see how it does so. With the temple, the temple was adorned with gold, and that gold was formed went into the images of trees and plants with fruits and animals. Hearkening back to the Garden of Eden. And what happens in the temple, if you think about it, so think of the, our church as the temple, and then like the court of the Gentiles was this court that was fenced in, and they had an altar where they sacrificed bulls, lambs, and goats. Bloody. And if you've ever had to deal with blood, you know that it doesn't get off very easily. You can't remove it just by sitting there going just like wiping it away. It sticks to whatever you use to wipe it away. And so what did they use to wash out the blood from the temple? Because in the Feast of Tabernacles, there were so many bulls and lambs 
lambs and goats being sacrificed, that they had to consecrate the entire floor of the courts of the Gentiles to be able to sacrifice. A lot of blood. And they needed to wash it away so they constructed these big giant pipes that would run down into the Kidron Valley, which then ran into the Dead Sea. And they would just sling water all over the floors of the temple to wash away all that blood. Pass forward to the cross. And what happens? Jesus dies on the cross for us to save us. And what happens next? The soldier takes a lance and pierces Jesus' side. And what comes out when that lance is withdrawn? Blood and water. And that blood and water pours out from the side of Jesus as it is prophesied in when the temple would do the very same thing. And when the temple was prophesied to do that, life would come to the valley of the Dead Sea. Of course, we can take things too literally and not spiritually. What comes forth from the side of Christ is new life indeed. The water representing our baptism. The blood representing the holy sacrifice mass, the Eucharist from the cross. Because what is the Eucharist? Body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. That is brought to us to give us communion, to give us grace, so that way we can grow in holiness, we can grow in love of God, and of our fellow man. And who brings that to us? Jesus, our eternal high priest. Unlike the Old Testament priests, you had generation after generation of Levites and the descendants of Aaron who were the high priests. You just have one eternal sacrifice offered on the cross by our great high priest and the line of Melchizedek. Jesus Christ, if you don't know who Melchizedek is, in the Old Testament, in the time of Abraham, Abraham defeats these five kings that had taken his nephew Lot prisoner. And after the victory over those kings, this priest king, priest king, does that sound familiar? Jesus is our king. He's also our priest. This king Melchizedek, who the Jewish rabbis thought was the oldest son of Noah, because he, according to the tradition, lived into the time of Abraham. And so you have the oldest son of Noah coming to Abraham, offering bread and wine for the victory, and then Abraham gives him 10% of everything. Fast forward. Now, 2,000 years ago, Jesus offers himself at the Last Supper. He says, take and eat, this is my body given up for you. Take and drink, this is my blood of the new covenant. Do this in memory of me. This blood is to be poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. And who is he telling that to? He's telling it to his 12 apostles who are gathered around the table with him. He is telling them, I am going to ordain you as bishops slash priests. And then you will do the same because you're not going to live here on earth forever. And right after the last supper, Jesus then offers himself as the high priest, what is called the high priestly prayers in John 17, offers himself to the Father in the way that Adam failed to do in the garden. When the servant tricked or intimidated Eve into eating the apple, Adam was sitting right there and he failed to do his job. But Jesus Christ fulfills that priestly role of Adam. 
And all of a sudden, even in the beginning. And so Jesus is bringing us back into communion with God, into Eden. That is why we come to this place. We come here to go back into Eden and to be in communion with our God. And the person of the priest, that successor of the helpers of the apostles, who are the bishops now, Father Audrey, myself, Father Samson before me, whoever's going to come after me, all of us are ordained to bring you the Eucharist and the other sacraments. When you're sick, to bring you the anointing of the sick. When you're before you go into surgery, the same. To baptize your children and those who are coming into the faith. We, are, we have been called to be these fishers of men, as it says in the gospel today. To bring God to you and to bring you to see the very face of God in the Eucharist. That is my great blessing, Father Audrey's great blessing. And all the priests who have ever been ordained has been their great blessing. To stand in the place of, the, of Christ the head in the person of Jesus Christ as we celebrate Mass. To bring Jesus to each and every one of us. And to bring communion with, the, with our God. That is the great blessing of my call as a priest. A ministerial priest. A priest configured after Jesus Christ the head of himself. In the line of Jesus head. And so, brothers and sisters, there's going to be times when you're going to have priests that are not very good. Maybe they're not good homilists. Maybe they fumble their way through the missal or through the gospel. Maybe they have a hard time speaking the language. Still love them. Still pray for them. No matter what. Because they believe Jesus. Imperfectly, yes. I could do, do it perfectly too. But we bring Jesus to you guys. And before I was ordained, my priests brought Jesus to me. And that is the great blessing we have as Christians, as Catholics especially. Is to have a priesthood. So I ask you, pray for us. Pray that we never take advantage of this great gift. Pray that we live our lives pouring out our souls as Christ poured out his soul. Because the soul in Jewish tradition was said to be in the blood. That's why you wouldn't eat blood back in the day. We have blood sausage now. That was a concession given to us by the Germans. I'm half German, so... You can blame me for eating blood. But pray for us that we never take advantage of it, that we never lose sight of this blessing of being ministerial priests in the person of Jesus Christ. Pray for us to pray for you, for everyone else here in Nolan, McDonald County. Pray for us to be holy. To live our lives, rejecting those things that will pull us away from our vocation. Because there have been priests that have. They have fallen to their temptations, to the, their sinfulness. And they have fallen away from the priesthood. They're still priests, but they can't function. And we need priests that can function. And so I also look at my young men here and say, is God calling you to be a priest? And if he is, have the courage to say yes. Because yes, there's days I'm tired. Yes, there's days I'm grumpy. But man, 
Ask him any life. Ask your dad. Ask your mom. You can look at them. You can tell when they're grumpy. You can tell when they're angry. You can tell when they're sad. Every life is going to be suffering. But I'll tell you what. If you are called to the priesthood of Jesus Christ, it is a great joy and blessing to bring the sacraments to you. Just as it is also a great joy to be one of the baptized. Because as I said, no other religion are we so united with our God as we are here. So let's give thanks to God. Pray for us, your priests. Don't be afraid to love us. Show us your love in the ways that you can. But do so as faithful people offering God their love and their thanks. Pray for us to serve you to the best of our ability, each and every week. I apologize when I fail. I'll continue to try and do my best.